uh, well, I'm happy that uh, the second international round table uh, to discuss all issues relating to the implementation of the international treaty for plant genetic resources is being held at Rio, Rio de Janeiro. It was in Rio de Janeiro 20 years ago that the Convention on Biological Diversity was born and uh, it now has proved to be a very important mechanism for all nations in the world, for all people in the world to commit themselves to the conservation, sustainable use and equitable sharing of benefits arising from biodiversity. FAO has taken the lead in the conservation and sustainable and equitable use of what we call agro-biodiversity. In other words, all biodiversity of importance to agriculture. And this is exemplified by the treaty, international treaty, a legally binding treaty, which commits all nations to conserve agro-biodiversity and use it equitably and sustainably. Now, a very important feature of, uh, of this treaty is the recognition given to the work of farmers, farm women and men over the ages in the conservation and enhancement of genetic resources. We all know, for example, in a crop like rice, there are nearly 150,000 strains of rice in the world, out of which over 100,000 are stored in the gene bank of the International Rice Research Institute at Los Bonios, the Philippines. How did such an amount of variability come? It is only through the interaction of people with naturally occurring variability, and it is farm women and men, also the indigenous people in different parts of the world, who have collected and conserved such valuable germplasm. And therefore, the FAO Treaty gives recognition to the role of farm families through the articles relating to farmers' rights. Similarly, the FAO Treaty wants to facilitate exchange of plant genetic resources among all research institutions all over the world so that in an era of climate change, when we will require more and more new germplasm, they are easily available. Uh, this is facilitated by the multilateral system of exchange of genetic material and uh, is a very important component of the treaty, uh, which therefore gives a recognition to the fact that genetic diversity occurs for sustainable and equitable use. I, I hope the round table uh, will uh, show the way to further enhance the value of the treaty for humankind uh, in terms of not only food security, not only livelihood security, but also climate resilience uh, under conditions of changing climate. And uh, the Rio conference, uh, Rio in the world has come to occupy, uh, the meaning of Rio has become one of harmony with nature and with each other. And uh, FAO treaty provides a mechanism for harmony between humankind and agro-biodiversity on the one hand. And uh, also uh, believes in equity and equitable sharing of benefits by all people because ultimately all of us will have to have a stake in conservation and improvement of genetic resources. This stake will come only if there is equity in benefit sharing. Uh, unless there is equity in benefit sharing, there will be, there'll be no cooperation in conservation of genetic resources. The treaty is therefore a sacred one, sacred for us to safeguard our future, to safeguard the future of our food security. The safeguard the agriculture of the future, and I hope the round table will shed new light, show new pathways for strengthening international collaboration, strengthening the partnership between the public sector, private sector, and academic sector, all concerned uh, with the conservation and sustainable use of genetic diversity. I am sorry I am unable to be present at this important round table, but I think the round table will uh, further enhance the value of the treaty and also show us the roadmap for extending the benefits of the treaty uh, to cover all parts of our globe, all communities in the world, and also create an awareness that the primary conserver 
ought to be uh, ought to be complimented, ought to be rewarded economically uh, and uh, emotionally rewarded, and that's the purpose of this round table. And I wish the round table much success. I do hope, as a result of this round table, all connected with the future of human food security will come together, uh, strengthen the operation of the treaty within the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and provide adequate support so that the treaty really ab is able to fulfill its purpose of becoming a treaty or a commitment to the future of humankind. And uh, I do hope that uh, FAO uh, and within the, within the, uh, within the overall uh, canvas of FAO, the treaty will become uh, the brightest jewel in the crown of conservation.